Hello everyone, good night. It's always nice to be here. Uh, this time we're gonna talk more about clean codes, good practice, and also the five mistakes the Java developers make to kill the babe, bugs and stress. So that's I'm happy to be here with Rafael. So Rafael is a nice guy, he's a nice developer who has a lot of feature and has a lot a lot of knowledge about clean code, DDD, TDD, and I'm gonna talk more about this good practice. So, hey, Rafael. Hello, Tav, it's a great honor to be here uh, with you, and I, I really appreciate your words. Uh, it's, it's amazing to be here. And we're going to talk today uh, about the five mistakes uh, Java developers make that cause bugs and stress. Okay, that's nice. Uh, please go ahead. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna share here the presentation. So uh, I'm going to to make a question for you. Uh, what are the biggest problems we face reg regarding bugs? What developer has never had real problems regarding bugs? I think most, most of us had problems, right? Do you know yeah. where a company spends most of its money? If your answer was software maintenance, you were completely right. Again and again, many companies commit the same mistake, software quality. In the past, I had a lot of trouble with bugs in the projects that I worked on. In the beginning, the managers wanted numbers and fast delivery. After one release, the problems started to appear. Lots of bugs, high coupled code. We had to refactor the code. We had to work overtime and many developers got fired. So what can we do to deal with situations like this? Is there a solution? And I tell you that, yes, there is a solution. Uh, so the first mistake Java developers make is about not saying no to short deadlines. Short deadlines are an unfortunate reality of the IT world. Do you know Steve Jobs' famous quote? Customers don't know what they want until we've showed them. Managers and clients often think they are doing the best by developing software very fast with realistic deadlines. They think that developing software quickly is better than developing high software quality. They don't know how disastrous this can be. If you ask a doctor to perform your heart surgery in 10 minutes, do you think she would do it? If she does it, uh, she could kill you. The same situation happens with us developers. Managers and clients often set unrealistic timelines for software development projects. Usually, this is motivated by the goal of faster plan. Unfortunately, doing this often results in unnecessary stress for the developers and a fragile product that is full of bugs. If you didn't already know, software maintenance is a company's highest cost. We must negotiate better with our managers and clients and show them that if we develop software with more quality, bugs and maintenance will be easier and cheaper. As commonly know, software changes all the time, so expansion will be easier. So by creating a high quality software, everyone wins. And Otavio, uh, I would like to know about your opinion uh, to short deadlines. Could you respond to me? Sure. Uh... Is that so difficult to us, developer, to say no to everybody, but sometimes yeah. we need to do. Uh, 
Yes. Mainly because, you know, uh, you can do a lot of stuff, but you cannot create time. <laughs> and <laughs> yes, I agree. And it's, actually, it's very that's, to... that's my wow. huge challenge to say no to my boss, mm -hmm. my manager, and even sometimes to my family. So yes. say no is not to, to, about the job, but about uh, the, your entire lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Yes, but, for sure. However, you must say no sometimes. Mm -hmm. That's good to you, good to the company, and you, you're yes. going to feel better, trust me. <laughs> yes, if, if we get, uh, if you have a really good argument to prove that we are right and we are developers, we know the best, I think it will be better for everyone. So I think it's it's a great thing to us to, to say no and explain why. Uh, we, 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 we can deliver this uh, in, a, in a short time, you know? And in, in the end, uh, the client may love our work because we are being transparent to them and showing that uh, everyone uh, are going to win with these situations. So it, it is a win-win situation for sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, we have a lot of ideas. However, we have just... 24 hours by day, so sometimes you really, really, really must say no. Yes. Okay, so let's go on. I will talk about the second mistake, that is not knowing frameworks. So developers write bad code when they don't know the basics, for example, of the frameworks API and the chances for developing bad code are extremely high. You don't have to be a ninja programmer, but you do have to know what tools you have available. You can avoid this issue by studying at least the basics to know what you, you can use to solve problems. Many times I have seen experienced developers in this situation. Uh, they reinvented the wheel and implemented much more complex solution than necessary. Once I saw a developer using a giant if to check if the select, selected object was already in the list. I think you already know what to use, right? If you thought about the set interface, you were right. In the end, the giant if was replaced with an add from the for from the set interface. So approximately 15 lines of code were replaced by one line. So uh, if we know the basics, uh, we will know that there is something uh, we can use to solve the problem. And we are going to be able to search what we need on Google. So, uh, if we master the language, the best programming techniques, and the framework we are using, our code will be better than if we just know the basics. But I, I think the most essential thing is about knowing the basics, because we are going to be able uh, to know if the problem can be solved with the framework we are using. So it's very important to know at least the basic. I know that for mastering completely a uh, framework, it requires time. But for knowing the basic, really, we, we, we don't need a lot of time. We can just uh, know the basics and know that the, the framework solves that problem. And we're going to be able to search, for example, on Google and for, for the concept, because we know that it exists, OK? So I would like to request your opinion, uh, Otavio. Uh, what, what do you think that, uh, what strategy can we use to master uh, a framework? Uh, what can we do to learn frameworks faster? Uh, do you have some tip for us? Yes. The open source, actually not me, 
the open source does. Uh, mm -hmm. open so an open source project helps you to to understand the framework. Mm -hmm. What do you mean about it? Uh, imagine right now I'd like to start to learn Java. So you can go to the through the documentation mm -hmm. and and you can read the documentation. If you find something that you don't understand, you can also send an email to the community and say, guys, this point I could understand. So you can understand the language. Also, you can help the community to make a better documentation. And also, you can improve that documentation. So you learn language, you have the community, and you get uh, networking. Because a lot of people are going to meet you there, mm -hmm. right? So yes. learn, network, and community. So we have matched a lot of things just doing open source. So yes. you can do exactly something with Spring, Java, and you know SQL. So imagine right now I'd like to learn no SQL product. So you can maybe I can join a Cassandra product. So I can start reading the documentation and give feedbacks about it. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a, a really really powerful tip, Otavio. I, I completely agree. Uh, with you, uh, contributing with open source, we, we can learn a lot. We can have an amazing network. So, and we, we, we can uh, also improve our code analysis ability. So I think it's very valuable, very valuable tip for every Java developer. Every Java developer uh, could uh, access uh, could access some open source project that he likes uh, and make contributions because it can help you a lot. So I highly recommend to you because you are going to improve our, your programming skills a lot. So it's a great deal. Yeah, maybe because there are a lot of ways you help the open source project. You can write a blog, you can there's a nice way, Axel, because you can share knowledge. There's one tip of the, to you become a Java developer star, right? Mm -hmm. So share your, what you know. So yes. you can write a blog about the, the knowledge and you can share what you know and the people gonna know that. Mm -hmm. Yes, for sure. And um, share is key. Uh, it's really powerful uh, when we start to share things, and it's it's amazing. It's amazing how the doors just open. It, it's amazing. You, uh, you you can write a blog. You can uh, make YouTube videos. You can make whatever you want to share what you know. So it's it's amazing. It's amazing. It's a really powerful tip about sharing. I completely agree with you, Otavio. OK, so let's talk about the third er error, third mistake, uh, that is about not knowing business requirements. We developers sometimes underestimate the complexity of business requirements. We think they are easy because they are not code, and we can have real trouble if we think like this. If we don't. Uh, know the business requirements, well, we won't know how to implement the solution effectively. There are some steps we can take to ensure we understand the business requirements. One very effective step is to clearly and simply write the main business requirements and save them in a centralized location for all developers to access. For example, it can be a Wikipedia, uh, it can be or uh, your repository. You can put the documentation, the the documents there, but it's it's not necessary to be uh, to be very complex document. It can be very uh, it can be a short document 
talking briefly about the, 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 the software, the business requirements. And this is particularly important for new developers who may need extra support in order to independently learn the company's business requirements. Another thing we can do is about having weekly or periodic meetings, knowledge transfer, to talk about the business requirements. It is a great way to ensure everyone is on the same page about the requirements. Bugs are a very serious problem. We must educate ourselves to improve our programming skills and persuasion skills to deal with them. So it's really important to know then uh, to know the business requirements. Sometimes we just think, oh, it's business requirements. It's very easy. It's uh, it's selling. It's buying. But it's not like that. Like this, we have to understand deeply the the business requirements or you can understand it uh, in, in a shallow in a shallow way not so deep uh, when you understand how you, your project work as a whole it uh, it can be very easier for you to to uh, build a solution to uh, implement your 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 code so it's it's essential to us to, to know the business requirements. And I would like to ask you again, Otavio, uh, what's, what's your opinion about uh, knowing better the business requirements? What can we do uh, to know them better? Yes. However, before I'd like to say what Plidio told me, uh, actually, he told you the entire chat. So he says, the third one is the worst thing, in my humid opinion. So I totally agree with Plinio. Uh, the people who don't know the business requirements cannot do a, a good code uh, and cannot yes. do uh, a good prog progress in that product. Yes, Remember, exactly. Um, the, the, the technology is just a way to go through the product so mm -hmm. the product really matter mm -hmm. and if you would like to do clean code and you like to do uh ddd code style you'd like to do uh dsl basically you need to know a lot about the mm -hmm. the knowledge requirement the business requirement yes imagine why not let you create mm -hmm. a system uh something like e-commerce I need to mm -hmm. know, I need to know a basic key about that because I need to create models and to create a good models to create a good a good service a good repository mm -hmm. and yes to make a good code to everyone can stand I need to write a code as mm -hmm. a business guy so basic I basically need to understand that and mm -hmm. that's my opinion I love to 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 see a code and i'd like to watch the code like i was reading something and to yes. have a, a clean code like that you need to write understand what you're doing right now and to exactly. write this, this point you need to know more about the business requirements mm -hmm. yes and it's very important because if we don't know the business requirements how can we make, uh, for example, a unitary test if we even don't know what's happening on the project? So it's very important for us to know what's happening and to, to concern about the business requirements because uh, sometimes we just don't care about business requirements and we have really uh, real trouble when we are, we are developing the software. So it's really important for us to concern about the business requirements and make a way to understand them. Uh, it can be on, on, on a central repository or you can make a knowledge transfer meetings. There are several ways we, we can deal with this problem. So we, we can do it in, in the company we work. We can 
just uh, convince our clients and show them that it's really important to have uh, weekly meetings to, to know about the business requirements. So now I'm going to talk about the fourth okay. stage. One, one second. Leonardo Sigala okay. says, in my opinion, I agree, if a programmer does not know business requirement, probably he produce a weak and understandable code. And I totally mm -hmm. agree with Leonardo. Yes, for sure. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to talk now uh, about the fourth mistake that is about not knowing design patterns. So if we don't know what design patterns we have available to solve the patients, it's going to be very difficult to implement the best solutions. We can have very high coupling and no cohesion, which causes no flexibility and no scalability. Then you know who is going to appear, Mr. Bug and Mr. Stress. The bugs will have a part in the code for sure, making our lives miserable. The very experienced and well-known programmers from the Gulf, Ning of Four, created the design patterns, solutions for common and day-to-day -day coding situations. Many of the problems Gulf faced were solved after creating the patterns. That's why it's so important to know them. Instead of going through the same problems, they did for many years. Uh, we, we can learn those patterns and make our code clean, flexible, and powerful. If you haven't mastered the patterns yet, I created the Design Pattern Saga on nobugsproject.com. You will learn in a practical way uh, why you need to, to use the pattern and what the situation you're going to use it. And also I included the source code there, so you you can you can make uh, also you can implement the unitary test. Uh, it's all set there, and it's very easy uh, for mastering uh, design pattern. It's not enough to know the theory; you must practice it. You must uh, have a practice, and so then you 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 are going to be able to master it. No, so you can download the source code and you can implement your own unitary test. It's very easy, and uh, all the explanation are there, and you, you can you can read the explanation. You can uh, implement the the unitary test, and you can really master the design pattern. And I would like to know uh, your opinion, uh, Otavio. Uh, what do you think we, we can do to master design patterns? I know that on, on open source code, there are a lot of design patterns. And uh, for sure, if, if, you, if we master design patterns, it will be a lot easier to understand open source code because we know that's not easy to understand open source code. We have to really analyze the code and understand all the patterns, what's happening. We have to read uh, the documentation is not easy we know that and we, we would like to know uh, a tip from you what can we do to master design patterns and be better on analyzing code okay so uh how far you know uh the de developer has the some behavior as musician so the key of the success is just practice a practice a practice so you can create a, a, a new product to test, a new framework you, to understand. You can create some some product to practice design patterns. Uh, it does, uh, I'm not sure about, not just to talk about technology, because you can help people doing these small projects. So I have a nice history about a guy who would like to learn about the new Java framework. And to do that, he created a, a hospital manager. And this small system is running right now in, in his city. Basically, mm -hmm. we, 
he had one win to win because he learned a lot about design pattern and also help the city with the health if the public health a public hospital so mm -hmm. he learned it make the life of everyone the city better and a good point mm -hmm. is you design partners was born because they'd like to 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 create a, a, a nice code and a clean code and you should do that you need to really really to understand about the business requirements bruno souza mm -hmm. the java main says busy requirements mm -hmm. is how your company makes money and he yeah. is totally right and leonardo mm -hmm. segala says again if you don't know the the future of the requirement or the north of the product mm -hmm. you cannot determine the good architecture for the project yes and and to design partner you return again to understand business requirement and also practice yes for sure this is key and, and a lot of people is to yeah, a lot of people see you talking about the, the previous one. And Joe Marcos says, understanding the business requirement is is basically understanding the, the primordial wish of the clients and who requests the product. So in the first place, and a lot of people see you talking mm -hmm. about the, the third one. Mm -hmm. Yeah because it's really important to us so yes as as you told us otago i totally agree with you practicing is key and another thing another tip that bruno souza left for me and for every java developer is about analyzing code it's a very 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 powerful tip uh if we analyze code for from java for example you can you can read the string class. Uh, you can open the string class and check it out what's happening there. Or you, you, you can check the, the, the class system. For example, we use every day the system.out.println. And we, we don't know what's happening. So we, we have to know, we have to enter in, the, in this class and, and to, to check it out what's happening there. If we do this one hour uh, every day, you'll see how your programming skills will improve. It's amazing, it's, it really works. I, I, um, I can really assure this for you. So uh, we're going to talk now about the, uh, the fifth mistake that is focusing only on technology, tech, technical knowledge. So um, I made this mistake for a long time and I never realized why I wasn't advancing in my career. I was only focusing on technical knowledge and as a consequence, I lost many opportunities without even knowing what was my mistake. I did great work and used the best programming techniques available, but guess what? Nobody knew I was doing it because I didn't know how to show my work. I worked hard every day, but nobody realized what I was doing. We must do more than just coding. We also have to develop our soft skills like dealing with people, organizing and measuring the complexity of activities, understanding business requirements, and knowing the project as a whole. We won't be able to apply the best solution without these skills. I have written many articles on obexperty.com that help developers improve their soft skills and technical skills, <coughs> and also to realize the importance of having both. So it's, it's really important to remember that uh, we can't focus only on technical knowledge or only on soft skills. If we are too good on soft skills, 
uh, and we don't have the technical skills, we, we are going to be like a charlatan, you know? So uh, it's really important to us to really uh, focus on both. But uh, we, we have to give importance for soft skills because uh, I, I made this mistake and I, I see by myself, I've seen it that I, I lost many opportunities and I, I, I just didn't know why I was having this mistake. So I, I would like uh, our opinion, an, an opinion for you, Otavio. What can we do to improve our soft skills? It's a very difficult thing to us developers, you know? Yeah. That's a, 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 a huge thing because if you just focus only on technical knowledge, you forget to know again the third one. That's, you forget to, to know about the business requirement. And mm -hmm. a good tip, of course, is community. Communities is a key to my career. I love community because I meet a lot of friends and I could, I could learn to communicate because I start to do presentation, I start to share what I know. And when you start to share what you know, you have basically two ways. You have write a blog, and speak and if you start to learn how to speak better and understand the people you can talk because the best uh, presentation in my opinion is when the presentation or the speaker does some interactions so you can learn a lot just doing and help the community doing presentation and write posts and blog um alex lopez oh my good friend is i'm so miss you <laughs> here yeah. in brazil uh our work my friend and he he gives give us a chip again um go through the open source is a nice tip mm -hmm. yeah yeah totally agree yeah. with him yeah mm -hmm. for sure Okay, so I'm, I'm just uh, I'm just uh, going to recap here. We talked about short deadlines, uh, not knowing frameworks, not knowing business requirements well enough, and not knowing design patterns, and focusing on only technical knowledge. So. This was these were the the topics we discussed here, and be sure to join on Nobugs project to learn more ways to improve our programming skills and soft skills, and be sure to stay tuned to Soul Java because uh, it's always uh, there are always really amazing uh, videos here uh, with the with with very. Uh, good programmers so we will we will learn a lot for sure so stay tuned to so java channel yeah please stay on in the java channel have a lot of knowledge here a lot of tips and also if you'd like to share what you know and improve your soft skill improve your career please tell us Maybe we can do a nice presentation to us right now. So uh, we have Bruno, we have Alexis, we have myself and and Rafael. So please contact us. Send us an email. Mm -hmm. And please stuff us, send feedbacks to us, yes. improve this this channel because this channel is to community for community. Yes. Exactly. Okay, Rafael, where are you? I can I cannot see you right now, guys. Uh, do you have any questions and feedbacks that you like to know? And also, Alex, I'm really happy to you stay here. Maybe you can do a nice. Uh, a presentation when you have time, perhaps the next week. 
Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, Leonardo say thanks so Java. Okay, guys, if you... Oh, Rodrigo Montinho, nice presentation, Rafael. Great knowledge. Oh, thanks, Rodrigo. Thanks, Rodrigo. I really appreciate your compliments. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's no question yet. Mm -hmm. um, and that's it. Thank you, guys, you watch us. Uh, have to see you soon. If you're not a next tip, thanks, Rafael. That's really mm -hmm. worth to us. You'll understand more the most, mm -hmm. the worst mistake that you're doing for a while. Yes, uh, it was. Uh, I really appreciate to be here with you, Otaga. Uh, I really admire your your work. For me, you are totally reference, and I think every Java developers should follow you too and should should follow so java should follow nobody's projects should follow everyone because we are going to learn a lot yeah please follow us on twitter at chat of java rafael at br java man and mm -hmm. and that is it on my side yeah do you have any more comments? I think this is it. Uh, you you have to focus on uh, you you can focus on on these uh, five mistakes and avoid them as much as you can. Avoiding them, uh, you're going to improve your programming skills. You're going to improve your soft skills, and more important, you're going to improve your career. You're going to get your career to the next level. Okay, guys, see you soon. Please stay for yours and so Java channel. And goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you.